Here's one we don't get very many requests about. Uh, this person says in your Saturday newsletter tip, let me stop right there before I read the rest of it. If you're not subscribed to the Saturday newsletter, go to the website diningmice.com and in uh, the left column on your laptops or your computers, I'm not sure how it appears on your phones and your tablets. Uh, but you'll find a place that you can subscribe to our newsletter. Now we don't we don't use that newsletter to just you know ramp up sales and stuff like that. But every Saturday you get a composing tip, a tip about composing paintings, just like similar to the tips you get here on the quick tips. So you might try that because this is where this quick tip this uh, request comes from. Uh, this person says you talked about the axis in a painting. Ah, uh, but she says I still don't get it. Would you do a quick tip where you explain this axis thing and why we should care about it? We will do some balancing. We all know what it feels like if we get thrown off balance, like if we lose our balance and we fall. Or, or if we're in a position where somehow we get thrown off balance, it's not a good feeling. Your paintings can be off balance too. So that's what this is about. Now, let's just take one general idea, concept, which is always true. If you're painting on a rectangle, it can be horizontal, it can be vertical. You have here already uh, the ability to balance. Our natural tendency is to go to uh, the, or have the thing balanced toward the center, which is called a natural balance. Let me show you how that works. Let's see it. I'll just kind of approximate the center there. So our natural tendency, if we're looking at a blank rectangle, is to respond to the center of it. It's called natural balance. It's based on this old-fashioned balance scale where uh, in order to for things to be balanced this axis the the horizontal portion has to be even across this axis so we can think of axis or remember that there is a natural axis to every rectangle it's right in the center and so it doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or vertical we're going to have that natural axis but there's another kind of balance that artists use as well, and that is they create an axis. So rather than the axis being in the center, an artist might decide to put an axis maybe to the right, or to the left, or maybe to the right. Not, not two axes in one painting. It's usually to the right or to the left. And the degree to which it goes to the right or the left determines how you balance the painting. Well, this is called steel yard balance. And you see it's based on, on the old steel yard scale, which was also called the, the Roman scale. It goes way, way back. Uh, where a weight is used on this side, the axis you see is not in the center, but it's to one side. So there's a weight here, and then the weight is balanced according to what is hanging here. So when we, we're in painting, when we use the, uh, the, norm, the natural balance, then we're balancing towards the center. But we can change that and create an axis uh, to the right or to the left of the center, and that's still your balance. Now I want to show you some examples of that uh, done throughout the history of painting. So I'll take this away. One that we, a painting that we are all familiar with is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. And I want you to look, and you probably have already noticed this before. In fact, I think I've probably have done a quick tip where, where I've pointed this out. The Christ figure is right in the center. The grouping on either side is, are, uh, is balanced one group against the other so that it doesn't tilt in one direction or the other. That re-emphasizes this axis. This is the axis of this painting. And there are other things that balance it too. There are many, many ways to balance it, and the quick tip is not long enough to do that. But just the fact of axis, just becoming aware of the fact of axis, and that you, uh, your balance should be on either side of the axis, the way you arrange things, 
uh, are balanced on either side of that axis. So you can see that also you can also look at the things that are influencing the balance. It's the grouping, the weight of the grouping here. It's the direction of the, the angles of the architecture. The angle is one point perspective angle and all those angles are pointed directly to that Christ figure. You see that? You see it right here, like that. So those two things Leonardo has used to balance the painting. Now, uh, another example, though, of how, how the natural, that's the natural balance now, was this automatically balanced in the center. Richard Smith's painting here, this portrait of, of Lisa, is also balanced by natural balance, but it's balanced a little bit differently. The one that we looked at of Leonardo's might be referred to as formal balance. That's where things are pretty much equal, kind of a mirror image on both sides. But with a more informal balance, we can still balance with the axis in the center, but we use different kinds of things on either side to balance the, the main subject. Usually it's the main subject that goes in the center. So there are many, many examples you can look uh, uh, Google um, any almost any artist in the history of art and you can notice that some use the natural balance where the axis is in the center and some use the um, steel yard balance where the axis is in some place other than the center. So let's look at some more examples now of the steel yard balance. And here's one that really looks dated because of the of the clothing. This one, this is a Thomas Gainsborough. You see, it's kind of obvious here that the axis is right here. And most of, and with axis being here, the subject between the axis and the edge, and that's where you're balancing. By the way, I neglected to say that you're balancing between the axis and the edge. So what goes on one side balances another side needs to be equally balanced. Uh, the axis here, because this is so close to this edge, there needs to be a quite, in, uh, quite a significant weight here to balance whatever goes on over here. You see, we've got lots of stuff going over on this side. We've got the figure, this figure, uh, the, this portion of the dress is pulling more into the space towards this direction of the edge. We have these little trees on the edge. We have uh, this part of the landscape. Uh, actually going off the edge which carries a heavier balance so all right we can see very well that the axis is here and so that's, that's another that's a use of steel yard balance uh, we'll go to the next one here the next example and this is uh, uh this is an axis also steel yard balance a different kind of balance now this one is balanced by movement and we can see that the, the axis feels right here. We can see this by uh, this division of the dark light and then the vertical pointing this direction. This is where the axis is. And we can see now this movement of from the edge to the axis, this movement is moving in this direction. This is moving in this direction. This is moving in this direction. This is moving in this direction. And then we see that this movement is sort of moving down we see this one moving out, this one moving out, and we see then we see this completing the movement here, and this this being heavier on this side, balancing this lighter part. Uh, you learn how to do that over time with practice. Now let's get uh, let's let's see another example. It's really interesting. See, you'll see the pro you'll see the steel yard balance method with the axis to one side or the other. You see that used more often. You see some really creative ways that artists have used that. Uh, here's one by Monet. Monet did a number of studies of the Houses of Parliament, and this is one that he calls the um, Sunset House of Parliament Sunset. You can see the axis is right here. You feel that strong vertical here, very close to the center, but not quite on the center. And then we see here. We see this this darker shape connected to the axis part, and then we see here an inter an inter emission or an interference of that shape, which help, helps the, this movement of 
this helps to pull the eye in this direction and we see that balanced in this direction by this longer heavier shape more space over here needs more stuff between the edge and the axis to help balance it so we feel we feel balanced we feel when we look at all of these we feel balanced we don't feel the topsy-turvy and we can look at one more now this is much more modern um, Richard Schmid who uh, if you're accustomed to studying me with me for any length of time you know is one, and one of our contemporary artists I have a great admiration for uh, he's now deceased but he left a body of work behind that is uh, exemplary of how painting should be done realistic painting well any kind of painting in fact so uh, he's used the steel yard balance here you can feel it usually you can feel where the axis is there'll be some sort of emphasis that will we will have that vertical feeling or that vertical sense of axis there we see here he's used a very dark shape on this side uh, going off the edge which carries quite a bit of weight that balances what's going on over here we have the larger shape on this side and then we have the extension of the branch into this shape which helps pull the eye back in this direction helping to balance this plus this darker shape here pointing back in towards the axis that goes off the edge and that it's isolation of that dark shape plus the fact it's darker uh, stronger contrast that helps create the balance there then we have the movement of this light that's moving in this direction right here so this is an excellent uh, use of balance uh, of using different kinds of elements on both sides of the axis to create that balance so if, if you want to study balance a little bit more in depth, um, there is a, a kind of balance that is the steel yard balance that we have done a complete series on. And I'm not trying to sell you lessons necessarily, but just to say that if you go to the website uh, and you curse it down, uh, the first section, second section uh, shows you the series. There's one called steel yard balance, and I give you four lessons of how to use steel yard balance. It's kind of obvious how to use the natural balance in the center, but there are all kinds of creative things that can be done with the steel yard balance. So pay, just paying attention to the fact of balance, not getting overly concerned, but just watching how does it feel when you are creating a painting. Uh, not just that you're able to make things look like what they are, but are they balanced in that rectangular space? Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.